Hey friends, today on Restored Kitchen, we're going to be making artisan bread. This is a no need, super simple bread that's delicious and definitely a staple in my home. So let's get started. Grab a big bowl and we will be using bread flour. Bread flour is going to give us a little bit more of a chew. And yes, if you're wondering, you can use all purpose flour. It just will be a little bit softer. With that, we will add three and three fourths cups or 450 grams of flour. Next, we'll add two and one quarter teaspoons of instant yeast. I'm also adding in one and three quarters teaspoon of salt. Go ahead and grab you a wooden spoon. We're going to give this a quick mix before we add in our water. Next, we'll add one and one half cups of warm water. Ideally, you want to pour this in slowly as you stir. That's not what happened here. I only had one hand, so we just plopped it all in. Came out fine. Either way, it's going to work. And now we stir and stir and stir. So there are two ways to make this. You can make this in one day or make it overnight. I will be making this um, in one day and I'll tell you the difference as well. But you're going to continue to stir this because it's going to look like it's not coming together. Trust the process. It, it will come together and you can see it's still kind of flowery. I've got to clean up. I can't help it. But this is one of the easiest breads to make. Um, don't be intimidated. Just try it. That way you can have fresh bread because there's nothing like it. And if we haven't met, my name is Jennifer Scott. On this channel, we do recipes, gardening, homemaking, and more. So be sure you hit subscribe. That way you won't miss a video. And I want to take a moment to just say thank you to my subscribers. I am overjoyed in the support that you guys have shown. And so I just want to express my gratitude. So thank you very much. After you've pushed the dough around and waited for the water to seep out, cover your dough and we're going to let this sit and rise for one to two hours if you're doing this the same day. After one to two hours or when your dough has doubled in size, this is what it's going to look like. Now, if you were doing this overnight, you would, when we cover the dough to let it sit and double in size, you would place it into the refrigerator for eight hours overnight or up to 24 hours. And then in the morning, you will remove this from the refrigerator and just let it sit on your counter to come to room temperature. Um, it will look kind of sad, but that's okay because this next step is going to kind of liven it up some. And to do that, we're going to be doing most of the work in the bowl. So we first will use either wet hands or a spatula and we're just going to free this up from the sides of the bowl by just kind of pushing down on the edge and pulling the dough away from the side. Now don't be discouraged if you notice that as you are working your way around the bowl that it sticks back to the sides of the bowl. We are just trying to give it an initial just kind of removal because what we'll be doing is pulling on one end of it and folding it onto the other side. And you'll notice that as you go and do it, it'll start to form a ball and it won't stick as much to the sides. And that's exactly what we're looking for. And we're gonna do this pull and fold, turn the bowl 90 degrees, and we will stretch and pull up on one end and fold it onto itself, continue to turn 90 degrees. And as you continue with this process, you will notice that the dough will become smoother and not stick to the sides as much. And what we are essentially doing is just shaping the dough by doing this folding method. So you, remember, just keep pulling on one end and folding it over and turning it until you start to get something that's going to release easily from the bowl is what we're looking for and create a ball shape. So the term artisan bread is a, almost a vague, but it's known in the baker's world as a bread that is superior to that of your commercial bread, such as Wonder Bread or something you would get in the store. Um, it, it is a small batch bread that uses a special hand technique, which is that lifting and folding to create the smooth surface. It just has a better flavor and all artisan breads will be different. So you might bake one today and bake one tomorrow and it has just a slightly different texture, which is what makes artisan bread so special. Okay, now we are going to lightly flour our surface and flour our hands as well. And we want this to just gently release from the bowl 
and just plop it right onto our floured surface there. And also remember, we have our oven preheating to 450 degrees. We want that Dutch oven sitting in there getting hot before we put our bread in, which is almost ready. So we're going to finish this up by pulling up onto the ends of this, kind of like you would a, um, a dinner roll. And then I'm just going to kind of just twist these ends together and then place the bottom onto our floured surface. I'm gonna take my hands in kind of a C shape and just kind of cup it and, and pull the dough towards me. Now your dough should be holding its shape. I just wanna shape it just a little bit more. Plus I like just playing with the dough. Um, but all you're doing now is just shaping and getting it ready to be baked, which will take probably about 10 more minutes and we can get it in the oven. Once your dough is to your liking, you can now allow this to sit and rest for about 10 minutes. I'm going to place mine on parchment paper with parchment paper over just covering it. It doesn't have to be tight or anything like that. I just don't want it to dry out as much and we want it to rest. If you don't have parchment paper and you're gonna place this directly in your Dutch oven, allow it just to sit on your counter and you can put a light kitchen towel or a tea towel over your dough. And like I said, we're just gonna let this rest for 10 minutes. And 10 minutes later, we are now ready to bake our bread. Go ahead and grab you a trivet, set that to the side. And if you don't have exactly 10 minutes, this can sit up to about 30, so don't fret, don't worry. But I want you guys to look at this bread and how it springs back. We are now going to score our bread. We will be doing this by using what's called a bread lame. If you don't have a bread lame, that's okay. You can use a sharp knife or even a razor blade would work. And this slit just allows us to control the baking and allows the bread to expand. I'm now going to score the sides just to create some sort of design. I would love to learn how to do all these intricate scoring that I see. Um, I see so many designs that are beautiful. I've even seen somebody use a toothpick. So let me know in the comments if you have any tips on how to score designs. I would love to learn. Now we are going to remove our Dutch oven. It is hot, so use caution. And I just want to just let you guys know so on the sides of this, you see there are scorch marks. That is because I used a, a white or cream colored Dutch oven. So use a darker one if you don't want scorch marks. If you don't mind it, go ahead and place this in. Now I love using parchment paper so I can just plop it in because this is hot. We'll now place our lid on top and into a 450 degree oven for about 20 to 30 minutes. 25 minutes later and this bread is beautifully golden brown. I allow this to sit in the pot for 10 minutes just because this is hot and then I carefully remove it and place it onto the counter to cool. This is hot but did you guys hear that nice crunchy sound? And guys, look at the bottom. It is beautifully brown as well. Somehow I managed to lose me cutting into this bread, but regardless, I just want you guys to see how soft this bread is. I mean, I could bend this bread and it doesn't just break and tear, but it has a great chew and it's not hard at all. It is it's such a soft bread. This is a delicious bread. Not only do we bake it ourselves, but it is baked with love. There's no preservatives in this bread and it is just a great all around bread. In my home, this bread lasts about one to two days. Um, I use this for toast in the morning with eggs and bacon as a good alternative just to making biscuits. But I want you guys to listen to this crunch. Now, when you are baking any kind of bread at home, you're not going to have a long shelf life like you would with the commercial bread that has all the preservatives and chemicals in it to make it last. It's gonna last about three to four days. In my house, it lasts one day. My daughter makes avocado toast with it. I use it as an alternative to biscuits for just toast in the morning. And as you can see, I've made some turkey sandwich with it. It's a great sandwich bread. I wanna show you guys how soft this bread is just to even use for sandwiches. And this is just a turkey and cheese sandwich. I added some lettuce, tomato, mayo, mustard, salt and pepper, oregano, and some olive oil. I've even used this as a garlic bread or even a dipping bread for dinner.
This bread is super simple to make and it's delicious. I hope you get a chance to make this bread. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button for me and I will see you later. God bless.